If you've got tickets to any events at EKU over the next couple of days, you'd better double check to make sure it's still happening. I'll tell you what's changing on campus because of that threat. Two men from a Kentucky-based company working to help flood victims in South Carolina end up victims themselves, swept away by high water. We're in Nicholasville with reaction from the R.J. Corman Railroad Group. It's another gorgeous day, but I am tracking some changes showing up. Wouldn't you know it, just in time for the weekend. A new hour-by-hour -hour forecast just ahead. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 4. Good afternoon, I'm Jennifer Palumbo. The sunny and pleasant weather continues. Here's a live look at our sky cam in Prestonsburg where it's in the mid 70s right now, a perfect day for golf. But we're in for some changes. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has a first look at the forecast. Chris? Well, that is a good looking shot down there at uh, Stonecrest in Prestonsburg and they're getting more in the way of some sunshine farther south and southeast that we go a little more in the way of some clouds for the Lexington bluegrass region and points to the north that live sky cam here at Hamburg Pavilion showing a lot of at least sun and some clouds doing battle right around 80 degrees. So we're a little warmer even though we have more in the way of some clouds here at the station winds kind of swirling a little bit not a big big deal. Cloud cover showing up on Defender across northern parts of Kentucky. That's where we actually have a cold front that is off to our north. It's not that front that we'll track in here later this week. Short term, though, hey, it is nice. Get outside and enjoy it. Low 70s still at 7 o'clock and low 60s. That'll come your way by 11 this evening. That looks and sounds familiar because it's basically the same forecast that we've had over the past several evenings. When I come back in a few minutes, we will time that cold front. Into central and eastern Kentucky. Jennifer, that arrives on Friday, and we'll show you what it brings into town in about 15 minutes. Thank you, Chris. Just days after saying the school would remain open, Eastern Kentucky University has now decided to cancel classes for the rest of the week. It's in response to this message found Sunday in the bathroom of the student center threatening to kill people with tomorrow's date listed. WKYT's Sean Moody is live with more on why EKU made the decision to cancel classes. It's our top story at four. Sean. Hey there, Jennifer. The threat and the investigation into it have caused just a cascade of changes here on campus. Classes are now canceled for the rest of the week, and now bigger events like tomorrow night's football game are being affected. Just about an hour and a half ago, EKU Athletics announced tomorrow night's game against Tennessee Tech is being moved from EKU to Toyota Stadium at Georgetown College because of that threat found in the Powell Building. Also, tonight's performance of Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat at the EKU Center has has been canceled. Ticket holders can get refunds from the EKU Center. There's also been a bigger police presence here on campus today. State police, Richmond police, Berea police, and the Madison County Sheriff's Office, and of course EKU police are all patrolling the area, and the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force is also helping out with the investigation. A lot of students spent the morning packing up and getting out of the dorms. Some said they were pretty rattled by the threat. Others were sure that this is just a hoax. All of them, though, agreed that the university made the right call in canceling activities. Even though like everybody thinks it's a joke, I mean it does happen. Like last week, look what Oregon happened to Oregon. Look what happened to that community college and stuff like that. And they get threats like this all the time, but you never know when it's going to be real or not. Now, uh, for tomorrow night's football game, everyone who had a ticket can use it to get in there at Toyota Stadium. It will all be general admission. There won't be any reserved seats. The EK uh, EKU rather, athletics director Steve Lockyer told me that he expects there should be plenty of room for everyone. Live in Richmond, Sean Moody, WKYT. EKU has offered a $10,000 reward for information leading to a conviction in the case. Crews have found the bodies of two Kentucky-based R.J. Corman Railroad Group workers in South Carolina. Bob Vance of Lexington and Richie McDonald of Chesapeake, Ohio, went missing after their truck washed away on a flooded road near Columbia. A truck carrying five workers went off a road washed away by floodwaters around 1.30 this morning. CBS station in Charlotte shot this video of the search. Monique Blair is live at the R.J. Corman headquarters in Nicholasville with details. Monique. Well, Jennifer, we are told both of those victims were employees here at the R.J. Corman Railroad Group. 
Both of their bodies were found just a couple hours ago after emergency crews spent all day searching for them. Now, nearly 100 RJ Corman employees have been deployed to North and South Carolina to, to help Norfolk Southern repair rail lines that were damaged in the flooding. This morning around 1.30, a pickup truck with five RJ Corman employees in it was on Congaree Road near Columbia, South Carolina, heading back to their hotel from a job site. Police say Congaree Road had been washed away by floodwaters and the truck bypassed a barricade and went off the road and into the water. Three of the men inside the truck managed to escape, but two men, Ricky McDonald and Robert Vance, were not able to escape, and both of their bodies were found submerged in that truck after emergency crews spent several hours searching today. Now, the R.J. Corman Railroad Group has not released much information about these two victims, except that they were employees here at the R.J. Corman Railroad Group. Reporting live in Nicholasville, Monique Blair, WKYT. Thank you, Monique. But what should have been a fun night turned into a traffic nightmare for fans of country music singer Luke Bryan. Thousands of people tried to make their way to Talon Farm and Winery on Tate's Creek Road for last night's concert. Many of them waited for hours to get to the concert. Others never made it. It was a good atmosphere until we sat for an hour. And then people were like, all right, what, what's the deal? Let's get this rolling. And then finally, people just started turning their cars off because there's no point in sitting here, you know, just wasting gas. Luke Bryan pushed back the start of his set, hoping that everyone could make it to Talon Winery. The Lexington Mayor's Office says the concert promoter Freeman Enterprises will pay for the overtime hours Lexington Police had to work to control traffic. We'll have more on the traffic troubles on WKYT News at 6. Our reporters are working on a number of other stories for WKYT starting at 4.30. Amber Philpott is in the newsroom with a look at some of the news in progress. Good afternoon, Amber. Good afternoon to you, Jennifer. A six-year-old has been found after being left on a Pulaski County school bus for several hours after a field trip. Somerset is actually on fall break, but the activity yesterday was a special field trip for some students. They were at the skating rink when we're told there was a miscommunication that resulted in the six-year-old being left alone on the bus. Police say the bus driver didn't know the girl was on the bus and left the field trip to go to Lowe's and Walmart. We're told the child is okay, but police are investigating. For whatever reason, he parked at Walmart and uh, walked over to Lowe's, and it was after uh, um, it was after a couple of hours that the bus was parked there that somebody noticed the child inside the bus. Well, police couldn't tell us exactly what time all of this happened, but that the child was on the bus for a total of about two hours before being noticed. We'll have the very latest on the investigation on WKYT News at 5. A man charged in a deadly hit and run crash was back in court this morning. William Cody Mefford pled not guilty today on eight charges, including second degree manslaughter. The 20 year old is accused of leaving the scene of an accident that killed an 11 year old in July. The defense asked the judge for permission to send Mefford to an inpatient rehab program in Orlando. We'll have more on what happened today in court ahead on WKYT News at 5 30. And police in southern Kentucky are asking for the public's help in finding a missing 24 year old. Woman. Whitney Danielle Copley was last seen last Wednesday. Copley is a white female, five foot seven, weighs about 110 pounds, with hazel eyes and brown hair. She has a scar on the left side of her abdomen, tattoos of three stars and an infinity logo on her wrist, tattoos of bows on her legs, and a tattoo of a dragonfly on her lower back. She was last, her last known address was on Decatur Road, but she was also known to stay in the Houstonville area. We'll have the very latest on the investigation on WKYT News at 4.30. That is a look at just some of the news in progress. Jennifer, back to you. Thanks, Amber. The craft beer craze is sweeping the country. See how some fans are going to great lengths to get their favorite brands next on WKYT News at 4. And parents are paying a lot more for childcare these days. In many parts of the U.S., it's now more expensive than rent. A look at the numbers next in Money Watch.